the anterior superior iliac spine. So as you would expect, can you all feel your anterior superior iliac spine? That's an easy landmark. So you should be able to see that. And how deep is it from skin? Less than half a centimeter. So you should be able to see something like a hill. So you know with sound waves, anything that absorbs a lot of sound waves is going to look black. Okay? So you see you, a hill-like structure there, right under the skin. So that's the anterior superior iliac spine. Okay. So put your needle, put your probe there, pointing midway between the umbilicus and the sternum. Everyone with me? And all you need, you need to do is move the probe medially in the same angulation, so that you come across a pattern something like that. I'm going to freeze it there. You all get me? How easy was that? So all you need to do is find your anterior superior like spine. It's very easy. No one has missed this, have they? Yeah. Put a probe there and just move an inch in the line of the inguinal ligament till you come to that pattern. So when you come to a pattern, you're seeing something that's called an hourglass, or people have described it as a bow tie. And you can see three different muscles. So you can see an hourglass with a muscle on the left and the right hand side. And then you can see a muscle beneath, which is more of a circular kind of muscle. So the muscle on the right hand side is your sartorius, which is your tailor's muscle, which starts from the anterior superior iliac spine and gets inserted to the medial part of the knee. The muscle on the left hand side, so that's the cranial side, is your internal oblique. So that's one of your abdominal muscles. And the muscle beneath them, the circular muscle, is your iliacus. Okay? And the fascia iliaca by the name itself is going to be the covering over the iliacus muscle. Okay, everyone with me on that? So we we'll start again, anterior superior iliac spine, and just move medially till you get this kind of picture. Another landmark of getting this picture is that the midpoint of your hourglass always sits upon a bony landmark, which is your ilium, or could just be your anterior inferior iliac spine. You can see it better, yeah, exactly on the screen here. Okay, so I'll try to get a nice picture here and phrase it again for you. Okay, so this layer over the fascia, over the iliacus muscle, is your fascia iliaca. So, with my probe here, if I get a needle from here, okay, as this needle is going to come through sartorius, come in right here, and all I need to do is just pop that layer, and then get in. When you're actually doing it, when you actually pop the layer, it's a natural tendency that the needle overshoots by a couple of millimeter. So the, when your needle goes in, just bring it back by about a millimeter. And a characteristic test is that actually we did it this uh, afternoon in Ad Stater, but you put just a mill of local anesthetic, you will see the iliacus being peeled off and going down. And you make sure that you keep your needle inside the lens of local anesthetic you've created and put about 40 mils of quarter percent marcaine or chirocaine in that. It's as easy as that. So, what are things to be worried about? So, we are very lateral, okay? So, if you have a look, you're, you're about inch and a half away from the femoral artery. So, you, you're doing local anesthetic injection here, whereas your femoral artery is sitting somewhere there. So, you, you, you are, in spite of being quite lateral, there's always a risk that if you get disoriented and move too medial, you might land up going towards the femoral artery, femoral vein, and the femoral nerve. That's the biggest thing to be worried about. And when you are doing this injection, once you go towards the internal obliques, you normally have a deep circumflex iliac artery, which you normally find between the iliacus and the muscle. Okay. Right now, I'm focusing between the iliacus and the internal oblique. You normally have a vessel here, which is a small artery. You have to be very careful when you're injecting. 
and the best way to do it is aspirate every five mils when you're injecting it. Secondly, if you have a, if you keep on moving cranially, you will see that you're not very far off from the gut appearing. You see that? So that's the bowel coming in, so you're not very far from that. And the way you avoid this complication is that once you have entered head, just stay within the pool of local anesthetic you have created. If you keep your needle within that pool, you, you can easily avoid that complication. There are some conditions which you have to be very, very careful, which you might not get a history. So if you find something abnormal, don't do it. That would be if a patient has, ha patient has an inguinal hernia, then all you see, I've seen it at least seven or eight times, that you put a probe in and you see some gut floating there and you know that you can't put a needle there. The patient might have had a, a femoral graft put in on the right, on the same side you're operating. So you need to be very careful of these two conditions. Okay. I'm just going to what I'm going to do now is just going to change the probe orientation and actually show you how far your femoral artery and your femoral nerve is. Okay, so what's the, how the vein artery and the nerve are arranged in the inguinal region? So from medial to lateral, what do you have? Vein artery and nerve, so the typical picture, okay? So if you have a look at the right hand of the screen, so my right side is medial, you see a collapsible structure. You see that? So that's your femoral vein, okay? So I'm coming a bit more lateral now and then you see a round structure which is much less collapsible. You see the difference between these two. So that's your femoral artery right in the middle of the screen. And just lateral to the femoral artery, you see a triangular structure, and that's your femoral nerve. So the fascia iliaca actually splits up to engulf the femoral nerve. And if you keep on following the same fascia, if you could see it up till here, but between just overlying the iliacus muscle. And you see fascial artery there as well. Yeah, you see the fascial artery. Okay. So when you're doing a blind technique, you see that. So your first pop you get is the fascia lata, which is this fascia. Okay. The second pop you get is this fascia. So that's the fascia iliac. Are you all with me on that? Does that explain what ex exactly happened when you, even when you're doing it by landmark technique? So you're piercing these two fascias, one here and second here. Let's reflect.